Good evening, my name is Wallace Montgomery. I'm the pastoral intern here at First Baptist Church Roswell. I am filling in for Logan Carpenter tonight for our Wednesday night Bible study. I'm so happy to be here with you all and I'm looking forward to learning more about the Word of God tonight. I understand that we are, have started a new um, lesson, um, Living Faith in Daily Life. And just for a review, last week's lesson was work, working with heart, where the focus was being a craftsman for God, the work ethic, and the real incentive of work. I want to thank Logan for doing such a wonderful job with that lesson. And this week, our lesson is focusing on saying yes to Sabbath rest. And I repeat, saying yes to Sabbath rest. The passages in this lesson focus on rest and not laziness. Deuteronomy 5 verses 12 through 15 emphasizes the divine command for rest. However, the Sabbath command is more than a legalistic rule to hinder human activity. It is rather a way to benefit humanity. And Deuteronomy 12, excuse me, Deuteronomy 5, verse 12 through 15 reads, Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Now, the first thing that stands out to me in this passage, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 through 15, is I hear the Sabbath day a lot. So I had to ask myself, what does the Sabbath day mean? And this is what I found out. The Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week that we are to observe as a day of rest or as a time of rest. So if you're like me, who's always thinking, okay, what's next? What do I have to do next? What's next on my to-do list? I've checked off this task. What's my next task? I don't know if you're like me, but if you are, then this lesson is for you. That may be why Reverend Carpenter had me to teach this lesson, so that I could teach myself to rest as God instructs us. Further, we understand that if you have the mindset of always having to um, meet your deadlines, even if you've already done all the work and you're just looking for the next topic, or the next agenda, or the next project, to not forget to rest. Or if you're a parent, and you have little children or high school age children, and you're always thinking, I have to get them to the next sporting event, and I have to get this, this deadline met. To end all of your doing, and all of your shuffling life, and doing life, to not forget to rest. And I looked up why we, you and I, should keep the Sabbath day holy. This is what I found. Keeping the Sabbath day holy literally means 
to keep the Sabbath day sacred, or in other words, keep the Sabbath day set aside from the other six days in a manner that causes us to treat that seventh day differently from those other days of the week. I continue to do some work here, exegeting from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. And God reiterates, we the people, we are to work for six days. And work in this text literally means when one focuses energy to finish. Work means when one focuses their energy to finish. God Reiterates, we have six days to focus our energy on finishing. But the seventh day belongs to him. The seventh day belongs to God. Some translations may even say the seventh day belongs to Yahweh. Lastly, I see in this text that you and all of your household, which includes your property and livestock, must rest on the Sabbath day. This includes you, the individual, man or woman, your children, boy or girl, son or daughter, your slaves, male or female, your property, your livestock. And this is not written in support of slavery, but it is an acknowledgement that slavery was practiced. And I repeat, this is not written in support of slavery, but it is an acknowledgement that slavery was practice. If we look to our next passage, it is work is the blessing of the Lord. And this could be found in Psalms 127 verses 1 and 2. And this simply states work and family constituted the two dimensions of ordinary life in ancient Israel. Psalms 127 and Psalms 128 mutually, mutually express this idea. Human labor apart from God, human labor apart from God brings futility. Human labor apart from God brings futility. And it reads, unless the Lord builds this house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guards keep watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil for he gives sleep to his beloved. As I look into the text of Psalms 127, verses 1 and 2, and I think about work being the blessing of the Lord, the first thing that I kind of see in that text is that God must perform the task and not the individual. God must perform the task. And as previously stated, in, in some translations, it may not say God, it may say Yahweh. But the principle is the same. It must be performed by God. It must be performed by Yahweh and not the individual. The second thing that I see is that the word vain is mentioned multiple times in this text. And vain simply conveys the ideas of emptiness nothingness, futility, and worthlessness. In other words, without God or Yahweh performing the work or the task, the endeavor has no worth, or the endeavor is empty, or the endeavor is filled with nothingness. So the takeaway here is God must perform the task and not the individual. The 
third passage on this evening is we all need rest. All of us, even you. I'm talking to myself. We all need rest. And this is coming from the passage of Mark chapter 4, verses 35 and 41. And is referencing the stilling of the storm performed by Jesus. It was actually the first nature miracle of Jesus in Mark's account of the gospel. And I'm reading Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And it reads, And on that day, when evening had come, he, being Jesus, said to them, the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, Jesus, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace! Be still. Then the wind ceased. And there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe. And said to one another, Who then is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. The topic is all you need is rest. And that was Mark chapter 4 verses 35 through 41. As I look at that passage and I reflect and meditate on the title being all we need is rest or we all need rest. Yes, all of us, even you. The first thing that stands out to me is that Jesus was tired and needed to get away from the crowds. To get some what? To get some what? Yes, you guessed it. To get some rest. Jesus was tired and needed to get away from the crowds to get some rest. So he took himself and the disciples got into the boat and went across to the other side. While going across to the other side, a great windstorm arose on the Sea of Galilee. While on the storm, Jesus getting his rest, the disciples were panicking. They were afraid. They thought that they were going to die. It even says that the water was rushing into the boat and it was sinking. And Jesus was asleep, getting what? Yes, you guessed it, rest. But this is what also stands out. They woke Jesus up and upon waking them, Jesus said, Peace, be still. He stilled the storm, which as previously mentioned, was the first nature miracle of Jesus recorded in Mark's account of the gospel. No one would go into the Sea of Galilee when the winds were blowing and the waves were rough. And here's why. The construction of fishing boats in the first century left them 
to be very vulnerable during major storms, especially windstorms. As previously mentioned, everyone was panicking. All the disciples were panicking. But the storm was no match for Jesus. So that tells me that when we're in a storm, we lean and depend on Jesus, and Jesus will have our storm to cease just by uttering, peace be still. But it's our job to rest, and Jesus will do the work for us in our storm. The next passage that I see is the need for a private retreat. And that's also found in Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. And it reads, The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Mark chapter 6 verses 30 through 32 the need for a private retreat. The disciples were returning in this text from a missionary trip in the villages of Galilee and people were gathered all around Jesus and the disciples. However, Jesus knew the importance of rest. So much so that Jesus commanded the disciples to come with him to a deserted place or a lonely location so that they could be alone and get some rest and enjoy some quiet time, some relaxation, even some recreation because Jesus knew the need for a private retreat. Now this text may sound familiar because it is familiar. This is the text that refers to the feeding of the 5,000. But even within doing ministry or missionary work, however you would like to word it, Jesus emphasizes the need for rest. Which leads me back to the initial topic of the lesson. Say yes to Sabbath rest. So if you remember, we've had four passages here. And as I conclude... I want you to remember that, number one, Jesus wants us to save the Sabbath day and to get proper rest. Proper rest is a divine activity. Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Set it aside. Consecrate the Sabbath. Rest and offer time for rest. On the Sabbath day. Remember that. Secondly, we also must remember that work is the blessing of the Lord, as found in Psalms 123, verses 1 through 2. Work is the blessing of the Lord. We must remember that. Thirdly, let us not forget that we all need rest. Yes, even you talking to myself. That can be found in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And lastly, let us not forget, let us please remember the need for a private retreat. This can be found in Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. And our topic or our title, I want to leave it with you. Saying yes to a Sabbath rest. Saying yes to a Sabbath rest. My name is Wallace Montgomery. I am the 
pastoral intern here at First Baptist Church Roswell. It was a pleasure to learn more about the Word of God with you tonight. I look forward to the lessons learned from this specific lesson. Thank you. Peace and blessings to you. Good night. God bless.